I want to give a special shout out to all my patrons first. Thank you so much to my Biblio Spren, Biblio Howlers, and my Biblio Mansers. It means a lot to me that you give me your extra support for my passion and hobby. Hi everyone, uh, in today's conversation with authors, this is probably the second time an author returned to my channel to do another conversation with me. And today we have Gaurav Mohanty, the author behind A Sons of Darkness, my favorite fantasy debut of last year. And today we will just talk casually just to celebrate the release, the new release of Sons of Darkness. So, Gorav, how are things with you? Oh, look at that. That's the traditionally published hardcover. No, I didn't get I didn't get a ribbon, so I used my charger, <laughs> one plus charger oh, as a I did the better. <laughs> ah, <damn it. laughs> I couldn't find a ribbon. And that it looks really classy. So yeah, this one actually hey, from the broken binding. Yeah. <laughs> ah, nice, nice. So what? Do we cut the ribbon now? To celebrate this? Yeah, let's, let's do it. Let's do it. Yeah. Ta-da! Ta-da! Okay, I failed this. <laughs> Ta-da! Congratulations, man. <laughs> Thank you so much, Patrick. Thank you so much. Yeah, so I mean, guys, for those of you who do not know this, Patrick's video put Sons of Darkness on the map. Like, if someone goes and checks out Goodreads statistics, it looks like a Bitcoin, you know, where suddenly <laughs> after <laughs> Patrick's video, the TBR rate just really shot up. So, a uh, big credit to the success has to go to him. So, yeah, uh, thanks, Patrick. Now nah, you're welcome. And, and I just have to thank you for a great reading experience. And I'm happy, seriously. I'm happy to see that it has been picked up by a traditional publisher. And as I said to you last time, I wanted the book to get a hardcover with the same cover art as this one. And you got it. How did that actually, <laughs> yeah. how did that actually work? Because usually that doesn't happen when it's a, a traditional publish, uh, sorry, a sub-publish or let's say an indie publisher. And then you get traditional publish, usually, usually the cover art change, but yours doesn't. I think I got really fortunate with the fact that Head of Zeus, or as now I learned that they call themselves Halls, ah, yeah. uh, they have ah. often worked with Michaela, um, Michaela Alkaina, who is the cover art designer of my book. And uh, so they already have an existing relation. And when they saw this cover, even I was apprehensive. Like, okay, you know, guys, could we retain the cover? That would be mm. amazing. And they were like, of course, the cover looks amazing. And Michaela is this brilliant designer who we have worked with. So we're definitely going to retain the cover. And I was just over the moon, you know. Oh. Uh, all they changed is, I think they changed the color of the font to white so that it's more, uh, it's strike, it just leaps out. Otherwise, the old color used to be gray, like gray silver. Oh, it's white now over there? Can I see? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Uh... Oh, Yeah. Yeah, it's different. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I don't have the <laughs> I don't have the traditional published hot covers yet. Yeah, so, yeah. yeah. It'll it'll be there soon. It'll be there soon. <laughs> Fingers crossed. So, so they've made it white, so it like strikes up, which I get because I realized that I was having a problem with my bookshelf. You know, mm -hmm. if I go too far away, I the font used to just, you know, fade away into darkness. It was a little <laughs> too much with the theme. So <laughs> I, think, I think the white kind of like really leaps out and I love that. Uh, I think Jesse, who's the cover art designer, oh. as in uh, I don't know what the technical term is some cover designer who uh, collaborated with uh, Michaela and they came up with this. So, yeah. Oh, okay. Well, I think that's a nice move. And I, as I said, I'm really happy they're keeping the cover art. I think it's perfect. And I assume that Michaela will be back to do the cover art of the second book too, right? I hope so I hope so. I really do. <laughs> I hope so. I, really, so. I hope so. It will be bad if we now get a uh, cover change. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think that's happening. I'm going to like fight tooth and nail for her, you know. So, yeah, yeah. So, how are things she's, going with you now? I mean, things uh, have been surreal because, yeah, yeah it's been a year, Sorry. right? It's been a year since we last chatted on my channel. And yeah, I assume that things have changed for you because now Sons of Darkness has been picked up by Head of Zeus. So, how are things going on to you right now? I mean, the journey from an indie publisher to a traditional publisher has been quite a roller coaster of a ride mm. um like i mean as most of us know that as indie authors you're doing a lot of weightlifting on your own and so and i've done that i've you know uh, like fought in the trenches yeah. and suddenly <laughs> it feels like you know like i have some help uh to do this and you know some a very enthusiastic team who really wants sons of darkness to reach every reader like it's just not a token diversity mm. uh, public uh, publishing they're really behind sons of darkness i love my team at Halls, like Sophie, Nick, Nicholas Sheetam, who is the head at uh, Head of Zeus. These guys are, um, you know, fighting tooth and nail to get the marketing done. They know, for example, Book Talk is not available in India. I'm just um, giving an example, you um, know, but so they are doing their best to take my videos from Instagram. 
Okay. And then promote that on their book talk. They're doing that extra leap where my hands are tied. Uh-huh. So I'm really lucky and fortunate that I've gotten such a beautiful team to, you know, fight this war with. So I'm I'm, I'm excited. It's 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 and the book released um July 6th. I was thinking that since now I'm a veteran, <laughs> you know, I've already gone to the publishing thing. It won't have the same surreal effect, but it did. Um uh, the first one week, I, I think I had to mentally tell myself to keep my phone away because uh-huh. you know there were so many supportive messages flowing in and yeah it was amazing and it still is so hopefully the journey goes well especially given that september is my manuscript deadline for the second book <laughs> so, oh really <laughs> yeah <laughs> so hopefully yeah, i'm able to fulfill that the title is still the same right a dance of shadows dance of shadows yes yeah yeah yeah, yeah i remember that and wow you have a deadline deadline now <laughs> <laughs> yeah it's like okay wow this this that's how this works but it's amazing i think uh deadlines have always helped me work faster because of my law firm career that's always helped me so you know this is keeping me on track and mm. uh you know that's yeah. that's been fun have you got some lovely uh, fan messages or maybe even uh hateable fan messages <laughs> <laughs> Definitely a lot of hate email, you know, you know, for the, you know, who scene. Ah, uh, yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, that's, yeah, those, those are hate, but they love it. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I love that beautiful, loving hate that they have shown, Uh, you know, it's like, how could you do this? I love yeah. reader messages would start with this and it's been so validating uh, as a journey and so far, no hate mails yet. Uh, It's all been very kind and supportive. Like everyone's it's, um there is this whole thing on instagram which is like primary a uh, general and there's something called others requests you know if oh. someone oh. who you don't follow yeah and suddenly that that number has gone into like triple figures and for me that is like wow it just is it's, it's amazing that so many people want to know about the book or want to review the book or have read the book and want to talk about it um yeah i feel like i don't know neil gaiman in my own head <laughs> 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 new oh, game <yeah. laughs> good one <laughs> and you know i've been thinking about this because I, i did i don't think i asked you this one but sons of darkness features a lot of characters a lot a lot of characters and did, did you feel let's say are any of them inspired by real people you know like really really inspired uh Like I always have felt that, you know, each person has like this whole catena of personalities within them. Hmm. You know, uh, I remember the first fiction book that I've ever read in my life, okay. which I read by stealing into my mother's library. And I was very young then. And that I should not have read that book. It is called Tell Me Your Dreams by Sidney Sheldon. Okay. okay. And I was a kid then, you know, so for the first time I was introduced to concepts like sex scenes, <laughs> you know, and murders. And towards the end, there's this beautiful concept called multiple split personality disorder. Oh. You know, something which most of us know now, but at that point of time, that was fantasy for me. That was just like, what the hell? And then I realized that there are a lot of personalities within one person. And I feel that I split a lot of myself into a diff- lot of different characters in my book and made it extreme. Mm. Uh, but in the second book I am actually relying for one character I've, I've put up my best friend into her ah, okay. who is also my uh, alpha reader so I'm hoping she picks up on that and sees hey wait one second this is how I respond you know so uh, I think I hope so that that should be fun So mm, yeah yeah and you have mentioned also <laughs> that The Song of Ice and Fire is a huge huge inspiration to your books it is probably the biggest reason why you became a writer right And uh, if, let's say, if you're not writing a fantasy book, you're not writing a fantasy series, what genre do you think you will write? Ah, that, that's, you know, that's that's an interesting question because <laughs> when I initially started out writing, I think this was again in my law school, I thought my life has been very interesting and I'll write a memoir. <laughs> you know, I'll write my own autobiography. Memoir? You know? Like my own autobiography, I thought my life has been very interesting and full of uh, scandals and whatnot. Uh, so I thought it would be like a whole, uh, you know, uh, masala of romance fiction story. Uh, and I bombed. It it bombed and how. <laughs> <laughs> I was the opposite of Colin Hoover. You know, let me put it that way. So it did not work. But if I would love to, um, I love reimaginations. Uh, so I would love to, This is there was this idea and I know I'm not going to do it. So if any 
person who's looking at this wants to pick up on this idea, please go ahead and do it. I always wanted to reimagine India if the British Empire never came in. Okay. And write a love story from that angle, you know, because I feel that it could have been possible that India, Indian subcontinent with its different kingdoms and empires could have had a similar fate like the European Union, like a lot of countries in one continent. Uh, so I always had this dream of writing a story, historical reimagination, which kind of travels like love in the time of Mughals, you know, something mm-hmm. like that. So, uh, yeah, but I never got around to it. Maybe someday in the future. Yeah, who knows, right? <laughs> yeah, who knows, right? <laughs> and I find it also, I just find it interesting because I think uh, in real life, you work at a law firm and then also a, as a comedian, right? Yeah. yeah but yeah. the book you write is not comedy at all. <laughs> it is not. Patrick, but you like my joke. I remember your video starts oh, yeah, out yeah, with yeah. one of yeah. my poor jokes. <laughs> <laughs> That's not the poor joke. I like that puns. <laughs> that jokes are the best. <laughs> Yeah, but, yeah, but, yeah. Uh, you know, it is interesting. And that's why I asked that question, because I'm curious, if you're not writing grim dark fantasy, what kind of things that or do you think you will write? Maybe steamy romance? <laughs> <laughs> steamy romance, yeah. After seeing the success of Fourth Wing by Rebecca Yaros. Insane, like, right? It's all I can see on my Instagram <laughs> and Twitter. It's unbelievable the kind of uh, viral success it does. I don't know how that book reads, but... Uh, it definitely is a genre which has market value, but I don't think I'll be able to write that. Well, let's see. But uh, I would really love to uh, write about unknown history, like history characters who have been ignored from India, you know, mm. who have not reached mainstream uh, because I love history as a person. I'm not a historian, but I, I love those nuggets. And if I could put them in a way where uh, which people would read and learn a lot more about my country, I think that would be amazing. So mm. if not this, maybe... A sort of a guy Gabriel K thing, you know, where he, uh, yeah, 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 re- yeah, like you know, for for example, Lions at Al Rasan, where he reimagined uh, medieval Spain hmm. uh, by taking different names. I think that would be a lot of fun to explore. So yeah, that's true. That's true. I really hope you get to write something like that someday. But uh, it seems like Rock Rock of Rita. Sorry if I mispronounced the name, but uh, the series might be how many books long now? Is it three or four? Uh, it's five books. Five, uh, right? Five. Five books, yes. Yes. So my deal, by the way, is for three books. So let's see how it works out. And uh, my plan is right now for five. But I can now totally empathize with George R. R. Martin, how he started <laughs> off with three books. It became five and then it became seven, you know, because the idea is just like, you know, while you're writing, your ambition can be your biggest enemy mm. because there are so many ideas that keep coming and, you know, each character takes a life of its own, you know, going in different arcs. You're not really controlling it. And uh, uh, for me, the characters, the shapes that they are taking, the journeys that they're going around, it's it's amazing. I wish I could write like a 800 page to I can't. I want to keep it concise and let's see, I hope I'm able to finish it off by five. So... <laughs> George Martin. <laughs> <laughs> I hope you uh, write at a pace faster than him, though. <laughs> <laughs> with my deadline times that I said I, I think Hawes was very concerned about this aspect after Patrick Rothfuss and George R. R. Martin so I think all these new authors are definitely going to get very stringent manuscript deadlines but I think I should be able to finish the second book at least by September So, mm-hmm. but to be honest though I mean uh, we, this is a topic that is talked so often about incomplete fantasy series right and this is mostly due to yeah of course these to to people, <laughs> George Martin and Patrick Rothfuss, sorry to say, but we cannot deny that they have influence and do a lot of their stories have done a lot of good to so many people, so many. And I think that's something that we often forget just because the series is incomplete. So sometimes it's not only about quantity, right? Sometimes it's not about uh, the completion. I mean, I want them to be completed, of course, but the impact, we must not forget about them. Absolutely. I could not agree more. Like, I think, honestly, uh, I don't mean to be narcissistic. I'm the greatest living example of George R. R. Martin's influence because that man singularly inspired me to get on to write. Mm. Like, I think I've given him acknowledgements as well. I think when I look, like, if I ever get to meet him, I will pass out. (laughs) Because he is the celebrity for me and he's inspired. And the the intricacies in his book, then each time you reread it, you find something new. And that kind of 
talent that he has so it's okay i'm going to again quote neil gaiman i think he said it in the best way george r r martin is not your bitch <laughs> you know and yeah, i love yeah. that line i yeah. think it's it's perfectly fine he is right and he is doing his thing so uh you know i'm sure when it, the book does come out it's going to blow our minds away so yeah. yeah i i think george is just well it's just he's slow he's slow and he's busy he's very busy so uh but we know that he's most likely riding even even if it's very slow so yeah we yeah, just have yeah. to be patient whether it's whether yeah, it's plus the time he takes sorry sorry to interrupt but the pl- time he takes to ride uh you know you can read my book that's perfectly fine he'll do the same <laughs> <laughs> yeah you hear that's that guys <laughs> And yeah, Sons of Darkness is amazing. Really, I have mentioned how how much I love it, and well, because of the traditional publish uh, publication, which is good for you, uh, it means that I have to wait longer for the second book. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, but I'm happy. Seriously, I'm happy. Uh, it's not only because, uh, of course, I have this satisfaction, a bit satisfaction that, uh, I was one of the first to get to read and review it, but. Mostly, I'm just so happy to see that um, so many Grim Dark Fantasy readers now are picking up on it and loving it. Yeah, yeah. I think I think in that sense, uh, the success. I mean, it's not success. I would not call it. I hope Sons of Darkness becomes a, becomes a success. But the early attention that it has been getting in India is brilliant for the genre of fantasy because I think you and I discussed this in our last interview that hmm. the genre of fantasy is dead in India. Yeah, you know, so you weird. do not have. Yeah, that is the weirdest thing. Given that I feel ancient India is the cradle of the genre, hmm. uh, but like I mean, we discussed this about how Robert Jordan's Wheel of Time magic system, uh, he has himself told this has been taken from our mythology. So it's strange that no one has used that to create an Indian book with an hmm. Indian magic. System. Um, so I hope that like because some of the messages that I do get uh, are from. fantasy authors who are trying to write saying that this really inspires us you know mm. and if sons of darkness succeeds then that will allow publishers to take that risk on big books because i think that is the main infrastructure problem with india and mostly the global south oh you know, really that they are not willing to take a risk on big books oh you know unless it's non fiction so that because i remember in my indie journey huh. um three or four publishers accepted my books they loved the whole premise but they asked me to split sons of darkness into three parts not two oh, yeah, three yeah, parts yeah 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 yeah, yeah, yeah. Right? Said that. and it yeah and it was insane because I, i i told them i it's a five part series and you want me to split the first book itself into three parts that's not happening because that will dilute it and epic fantasy as almost a rule is has a few number of pages you know because that's the whole idea when you're creating a world which is so immersive you need to give words to it you know you can't do it within 30000 words yeah so i if if sons of darkness works it it would be like amazing it i still get a lot of messages by the way why is it so expensive oh you know uh, it is the same price as a uh, game of thrones novel a uh, slightly obviously more expensive because they published game of thrones in such a mass paperback volume obviously it's so successful but i told them that see it's 636 pages it is 600 rupees mm. you know it's not bad like you know but once they start liking the book i think there'll be a conscious shift where we will start having more authors because the whole idea that i i'm sorry i'm talking for so long no, but okay. the whole idea that i am the first grim dark fantasy author is while i'm very happy about that it's weird yeah. you know because this is so late in the coming so i hope that it just like you know like as if i'm karna and i'm bringing about a revolution you know in the whole caste system so i hope that this happens i'm not this this is not coming from a place of narcissism it's just coming from a hunger which like mihir from fantasy book critic and i have discussed this that we h- hungering for more indian worlds you know mm-hmm. so please this inspires that yeah and i think i can definitely see a search of it now though because we are definitely getting more published in the west uh here like kaikeyi uh i think back then when we talk about uh, when we did when we did our conversation i think kaki was out or not yeah. but yeah it is out now and she is a uh, vaishnavi patel i think that's the name of the vaishnavi author. patel yeah yeah i think she has another book coming and it it is mahabharata inspired yeah. Well. yeah 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 it deals mostly with the prequel like uh, bhishma the white eagle in sons of darkness if you might remember who had a big ah. problem with shakuni hmm. uh white eagle's father and mother so ah. it starts from there but she intends to come cover the entire mahabharata in one book 
which is something I can't imagine. So I'm looking forward to it. I think it'll be a lot of fun. So yeah, uh, Mahabharata yeah. is big. <laughs> <laughs> it's huge, right? Yeah. So uh, I think it 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 should be interesting uh, to see how that comes. Well, and she also writes in the in the fantasy genre, but slightly like different. But here there's a slight distinction that I want to bring out that Vaishnavi Patel, mm. for example, amazing author, but she's in the US. Yeah. You know, like oh. has published. Fact, oh, yeah, yeah, she's located in, in the US. Right. Yeah. Correct. Correct. In fact, actually, for um, um, reasons like political reasons and religious reasons, etc., etc., her book is not being published in India. You know, because uh, her reimagine. Yeah. So what? I, yeah, because um, her reimagination of she, I have reimagined Mahabharata yeah. in Sons of Darkness. She has re- reimagined Ramayana in KK. Okay. okay. But her reimagination of Ram, who is considered a god in India, uh, is has been subject to a lot of criticism uh, in the sense because, you know, apparently he's been portrayed as a sexist guy, which he wasn't, and he's a god who we still worship. Oh. Uh, again, I have not read the books. So I will not be able to comment on this, but this is something which I've heard. Uh, but I'm sure she's written a beautiful book and it should be allowed to publish everywhere because everyone should read it. But with the political climate, it has not been, uh, it's not been published. They've taken a conscious decision to not publish in India. Wow. Uh, I, I did not know yeah. this. I haven't read the book, yeah. so I don't know anything about this one. Right, right. So, uh, so this has been the case, but I'm glad that it's doing so well outside because, you know, Indian world's getting attention. But what we need more are actually also Indian authors, you know, who are actually staying in India to come out of fantasy Mm -hmm. you know because uh publishers like indians of american origin are doing amazing work from before and tasha suri oh yeah yeah. who's uh you know her series won the fantasy world uh, world fantasy series award yeah jasmine uh, last year jasmine jasmine throne yeah yeah yeah, jasmine throne yeah she's doing some amazing work so we've had uh fantasy authors who don't stay in india who are uh, maybe in the uk or in the u.s doing amazing work but we haven't had it in India yet, you know. So mm. I want like Indian authors to come up and you know bring out this world because, yeah, yeah we totally. come from the land of Salman Rushdie, who has won the Booker of Bookers, you know. So we have great writers, but you know we just like have to get into this genre. So yeah. So is it difficult for you to like communicate? I mean, I know we have we live in a time of internet, but yeah, is it difficult for you to communicate with like UK and US publisher? Uh so. Not difficult, actually, but it's always fun that or I think uh, you and I discussed this, that w- I'm so happy that you and I almost stay on the same time zone. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> because, you know, it's so convenient to host our calls. Otherwise, each call that I have with, uh, like, for example, I have a uh, head of Zeus organized a book celebration thing with the Gwine brothers, you know. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. And uh, yeah, and it was an Instagram live from the Broken Binding account. And we ultimately came to a compromise where I had to be awake at 11.30 at night on a weekday. Oh, and okay. that's how the session took place, you know. And and I understand that because obviously there's a difference in the timings. But it's crazy. So I'm just like, so that's been a bit of a uh, issue, but I think it's been fine. I, I stay up late, lawyer life. So I get their emails on time and I respond on time. So it's, it's been a good ride. Yeah, and anything, everything goes well, right? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> everything has been going so well so far, so touch wood. <laughs> so, yeah you know you have mentioned plenty of times that uh, you are a fan of song of house and fire like it's features on the back of your background there but <laughs> what if you were to live in the world of a song of house and fire in westeros which house would you be do you think oh, oh definitely Lann- lannister <laughs> lannister <laughs> yeah, yeah, for sure lannister you know honestly i think i george R. R. martin has never said this out loud but i really think that the characteristics of a uh, Lannister house, you know, as in the Tywin Lannister and his children. He has picked it up directly from the sun sign of Leo. Mm. You know, pr- proud, ambitious, haughty, uh, self-obsessed, all of that issues that persist with the sun sign, which I acquaint with because I'm a Leo too. So uh, it's like, okay, Lannister is something I definitely relate to a lot. Uh-huh. So, uh, and I love those colors as well, that gold and red thing. So, yeah. Yeah, Definitely it is It is a beautiful color. I, I really like the symbols. But Okay, but I really want to like turn the question back. Sorry. I think oh, your sorry. camera blurred. Yeah, but sorry. Sometimes this happens. <laughs> <laughs> Hold on.
I like how you're doing some Caladine sort of stuff, like from Stormbringer. <laughs> okay, it worked. <laughs> <laughs> it worked. <laughs> like a single hand Kamehameha. Yeah. <laughs> um, which house would you be belong to? That I don't know. I mean, if we're speaking from personality, of course, I would love to be Stark here because I love art. I like people. I mean, I I love Grim Dark Fantasy here. I love Grim Dark Fantasy, but I like seeing and knowing that people can be good you know people can be good kind-hearted honorable and we know the result is was not good it's not always good by doing that but i like it that's what i prefer i know that it sounds idealistic maybe even naive but that's what i would prefer maybe to uphold as best as i could anyway yeah amazing oh I can see why Karna was one of your favorite characters. Yeah. <laughs> like, this is this is amazing. <laughs> I still I still haven't read Mahabharata yet, but Amir from Fantasy Book Critic has sent me like kind of this, I don't know, a modern modern translation. Yeah, yeah, a modern retelling. Yes. Yeah, modern retelling of Mahabharata. I think it is in, uh, two parts. I forgot the name of the author right now, but it should supposed to be accessible. Yeah, because Mahabharata is not, yes, yes. it's not the easiest kind of book. Uh, yeah, definitely. <laughs> oh, I, th- I don't think it's a retelling. I think I used the wrong word. It's basically like just simpler English language. Uh, yeah. They've translated that from Sanskrit. So, yeah, it's fun. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm so looking forward to reading that. I don't know when, but yeah. Uh, and your book is definitely a big, big part on why I finally feel more interested and intrigued to try reading Mahabharata. <laughs> so I have to thank you <laughs> oh, for that. Amazing. Yeah, uh, That's amazing. Especially because, you know, I, I think even from a historical perspective, Indonesia and India share a lot of mythologies, but yeah. they are differently told. Like Ramayana, for example, is something in India. Ramayana is also something in Indonesia. And yeah. It's called something else, Ramnitri. I'm not quite sure what the correct term is. Um, and the story flows a little differently and that kind of shows cross-culturally how the stories have traveled and how they have you know morphed into slightly different tales everywhere and that's i think like amazing yeah i I totally agree with that like i mean in bali even hindu hindu is a big religion in bali Mm. (laughs) it's true because like in odisha in the state where i stay uh odisha has a festival which they have been celebrating for thousands of years which is called bali jatra which oh. a lot of Odisha people do not know. It basically means it was a time where sailors used to go from Kalinga, which was like a big, big naval empire. Then that's where I got the whole character of Mati from. Ah, yeah. Uh, so they used to go and they settled the lands of Bali and the Java then. Java, which was Indonesia now, yeah. was called Java then. And they settled those lands. And since the riches they got back from mm. Bali were so amazing. Uh, so the women used to go and float paper boats, praying for the sailor's safe return. Ah. And this festival has been going on for thousands of years, uninterrupted every year. You know, wow. and I think that's like connects us, you know, because Bali, Jatra in Odisha. So I think, yeah. Wow, that, that, that is awesome. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, it I, re- us. I, I remember that. that I did the review right on Sons of Darkness. And many, quite many Indian Indian reader reached out to me and say, "Oh my God, your pronunciation of the Indian names and words are perfect." <laughs> yeah, <laughs> like spot on. <laughs> yeah, and I'm like, this is just how I pronounce them in Indonesia. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's amazing. I'm still struggling. People have, like, I think there's been one interview where someone just gave up and started calling me Gustav. Huh? And uh, <laughs> I was like, you know what? It's okay. It's fine. I, I no, don't mind. No, <laughs> no that's not okay. <laughs> <laughs> you know, like at this point, I'm like Timothy Chalamet. He's just like, just call me anything. I'm fine with it. I saw his Dune interview. I'm, I'm going to adopt the same strategy. It's fine. <laughs> call me whatever. <laughs> yeah, but I think that's the thing where uh, us, the differences between us and let's say uh, Western readers, because this is language that is familiar to us, but it's not familiar to them. Like, absolutely, because you know, for example, Mark Lawrence recently reviewed the book hmm. and he enjoyed Sons of Darkness, but he said that for him, the names were very difficult because Satya Bhama, Satyaki, Swamantaka, these are all a sir, sir, sir names, ah. which he had difficulty in separating. Now, I didn't even realize that because for me, it comes very naturally. It's yeah. an Indian name it's an Indian, and they are very different in my head. I didn't even think from that perspective that phonetically and it sounds similar, you know. And uh, so that was interesting as well, like, you know, the whole cross-cultural approach. 
Yeah. So, yeah. But, well, that, that's also how we read books published yeah. in English, yeah. <laughs> right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yes, exactly. So I'm, I'm glad that in that way, at least, you know, uh, we get acquainted with different cultures. That's the whole idea. Yeah. Uh, yeah. You know, of books coming from different regions so that we get acquainted with them. Like after Black Panther, the interest in African culture grew by a lot. And now you have an animated show on Hotstar, which deals with, uh, uh, you know, a futuristic African society. And that's amazing. Uh, you know, so I'm, I'm, I'm just glad that we are like heading in a direction where we are more inclusive of, you know, names coming from everywhere. So Yeah, that's something that I can definitely agree with. I just, I mean... There's nothing wrong with European West uh, world building and yeah. all that. I love those. I love those stories. I've read a Amen. lot of them also, but I like having more varieties. Uh, I like having options for me to explore because, you know, uh, there's a saying, right? Anything that's too much is never good. And if yeah. we have too much of one thing, then it will get stale. There's no competition as well because it's just playing in the same uh, playground, right? Now we have more competitions, we have more varieties, and I think that is good for the genre. Really good. Oh, yeah. absolutely. I couldn't agree more. Like, just because you like jazz does not mean you can't like rock. Yeah. So, <laughs> yeah. I mean, it's like, you just like love to listen to different genres of music. Similarly. You know, I mean, look, Bar Barbie and Oppenheimer are now on theater. I I know people are watching the two of them now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Me too. I'm one of them. I have booked both the tickets and I'm going to Barbie first and then I'm going to Oppenheimer. Like, I am joining that trend. Okay. So, you, so you, got, I, you I, choose I, to feel happy first before... <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, Bob and I. I'm really hoping that day I don't have any case law, but I like case hearing, and I hope it should be fine. Yeah, but, but yeah, yeah, I totally, I totally agree, and I'm glad, I'm glad that there are so many varieties in fantasy right now. Some have, some have even mentioned that this is actually the golden age of fantasy because we are just well, we are flooded with options. It's right. I think right now it's harder to read all the books we want than let's say of uh, the, the difficulty of finding books in the past, right? F finding fantasy books. It used to be like, okay, I'm going to read this, I'm going to read this, and then we're done. But now, which one I'm going to read? So many books. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you know, choice can be a cage, right? Yeah. Like, that's something which I've always felt with my TBR. It's just which books to read. And I read books simultaneously. As in, I read one book in the evening, some book in the morning. So it takes me a lot of time to finish those books, uh, you know, and I feel like I wish I could finish them faster till I reach that, you know, 70% point because that's when every story, no matter is it a slow burn, it's a fast book, they all pick up. Yeah, yeah. You know? And it's just like, then you're stuck with it. The only book which has broken this exception in uh, this rule in the last few months was the book which was recommended by you, Red Rising. You oh, know. Red Rising. Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. It was so you know after I've turned in, uh, after I've turned a writer. Now when I read a book, um, I'm not only just enjoying the book. I'm also looking at it from a craft perspective. Oh. Like, okay, this line is beautifully done. I like the way the scene was constructed, or the scene was not. You know, and I keep highlighting stuff, and it's just something. It's a learning process for me. With Red Rising, I did nothing, none of that, because I was just so immersed. I'm like, okay, this is just like. Like, I'm just going to do popcorn fiction. I don't know what it is. It's just amazing. I love it. And uh, thank you for introducing me to that. That's, that's what was my first sci-fi novel, you know. Yeah, so. you, you're so welcome. I love Red Rising. And the newest book is coming this month. And, you know, have you read Golden Sun yet? You did, right? No, no. You told me it oh, gets okay. better, right? Okay, okay, okay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it gets even better. Really, really, oh, wow. really better after this. And I consider Red Rising probably the weakest of the entire series. One of the weakest, yeah. But it is already that Can't... good. Yeah. I can't imagine that like that's something which is beyond my imagination. Like how, when you say that Red Rising is the weakest book, I'm like, what? <laughs> that's that's, that's like, why yeah. that's why I said to you that there are a lot of things that you can pick up from this, even from the storytelling uh craft. Yeah. There are a lot yeah. a lot of things that you can learn from Red Rising saga. Absolutely. I, I completely agree. And I think uh in that I hope that someday, uh, you know, I reach a point and that's my dream. And I hope I'm able to do that because I am very cognizant of the fact that a lot of authors are one-time successes, mm. you know, where, and if anyone has watched Patrick Leo's videos where series, which you should not continue on, <laughs> you know, stuff like that. You can, you can see that there are a lot of books which are one-time hits, uh, but I really hope that I'm able to craft a series where Sons of Darkness is the weakest book. Yeah. You know, and that that's like my hope and dream. So I hope, yeah, Dance of Shadows proves to be a much better edition. My Golden Sun, you know, if I will. Yeah, <laughs> that will be amazing. Yeah, Golden Sun is yes. often considered by 
many readers to be like what the best or the best of the series one of the best for sure so yeah, that would be amazing and you can do it come on <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and you know just one more question here uh i was wondering have you watched a succession you did right at uh, the first season you know i'm not really head on to the second ah, and third yet it. it's like i like i really want to it's just so good and my brother keeps watching it in the in 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 the flow below um but you know i've just not been able to with the books release and my court hearings and this it's just like i'm trying you know i really want to give it like the complete time and devotion yeah because so i've been I'm, i'm thinking uh what maybe i will leave this for you to answer one day after you have watched uh, succession okay uh, because you love a song of ice and fire too and i think this is the kind of series that will suit uh people like us who love that kind of uh, betrayal of a plot twist and all that so let's say when you watch that show or maybe you want to answer it now who which character in your series do you think will survive the longest or thrive or in- thrive the or thrive the most in in what well, succession <laughs> <laughs> oh which which of my characters it will survive in succession yeah yeah my god thinking of siban and everyone i don't think anyone would <laughs> that family is crazy uh but okay i think i definitely think that krishna would do a great job in handling the roys logan roy and everyone i think i think his mind the way it works i think it can hold them at bay I, yeah i, I think, think that and so shakuni Krish- as well krishna yeah i think krishna is a good- Krishna is a great pick. Yeah, yeah. Thinking about it, yeah. I've read, I've I, watched, I've watched the entire series. It's amazing, Kuraf. You have to watch it. It's incredible. I, <laughs> yeah. I really can't wait. You know, but I know that's full of psychopaths. So sometimes they brought <laughs> Krishna, then I want to send Ek Eklavya into the mix. I'm like, let me add more chaos to that show. And I'll send Eklavya, his adorable psychopath, which everyone who is every who everyone loves, which is something so bizarre. That is something I did not see coming. You know, honestly. Mm. uh shishupala nikla where the love which they both received is something which i am so happy and glad because as a writer i did not anticipate that you know and this word this phrase which i used to promote nikla where the adorable psychopath is not my origin like someone else used it oh um, okay. the readers wrote it and i was like that is so sweet i never saw it from that perspective i'm glad that you know you you found that it that way and even shishupal like most of the law- my lawyer friends have read it relate to the way he has completely burnt out oh. you know he just wants to rest he just wants a holiday yeah, but life yeah. is not giving him one i think that's just i'm like okay i think it probably came from that part of my mind which i was not cognizant of yeah yeah so, it, i think that just goes to show that well uh people click with things that we don't expect right yeah 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 absolutely yeah. we all are different <laughs> <laughs> exactly you know like we just see our uh, our own experience reflect in the character and i think that just connects us a lot more so uh um, definitely that hmm. yeah you you mentioned that uh with how with how busy you are how do you even maintain your schedule of writing right now especially with a deadline and you have other works as well right it's actually been very difficult but very rewarding i love the hustle I, like i sleep late and i wake up early uh, but you know one thing which i realized and this is something which is disturbing me you know it's a very recent revelation <clears throat> now that i have a lot of work to do because of the book promotion it's the first month of the book release mm. i suddenly have a lot of law work as well like a lot of hearings in court i want to write a lot more oh you know it's wow. like as if my writing is an opposite reaction to the work i have because you know the more work i have the more work i do i feel like i want to escape more into my world ah, okay and so the number of words yeah i'm like no wait that is a very toxic relationship i can't have that you know because generally when i go to write i will churn out maybe a thousand words 2000 words in a day and but those days when i know i have a work deadline at 9 pm okay you know what no i'm going and i will churn out 3000 or 4000 words you know and i'm just like this is very weird this is <laughs> this is an abusive relationship you know between my writing passion and my law career yeah. so uh, yeah it's it's bizarre <laughs> you will you will survive in succession <laughs> <laughs> oh I, I, i think that's that is definitely the the highlight of this uh, this uh, this discussion you know that that i i might survive in succession that's definitely i'm going to write this in my epitaph <laughs> <laughs> note the word might okay 
<laughs> well, you know, I think this has been really great, Gorov. And thank you so much for coming to my channel again. I just want to say that congratulations on the second release of Sons of Darkness. So last question to close this interview, to close this conversation. It's really just conversation, really. It's, it feels like I'm just talking with a fellow fantasy uh, fans. And I'm I like that. So last question, when do you think book two will be ready? So since I'm supposed to submit the book two by September, uh, they intend a book release by next year itself. I think around February, March, Jan. I'm not quite sure exactly when are they looking at it, uh, but definitely before June next year. Oh, so okay. uh, they intend like a yearly release of each book, which is great. Uh, which also puts a lot of pressure for the third book because for the second book, I've taken like three years to write it. It's something which I had started writing and devising while I was searching for a publisher. Oh, so, yeah. so let's see. At least I'll be able to fill, fulfill my second book deadline. Third book, I think I'm going to pull a George R. R. Martin and say, hey, you know, I need that. Uh, that, that that's it, guys. I'm sorry. <laughs> I need to speak to you. <laughs> <laughs> I'm having so much fun with the second book because the the cast of characters like there's this whole librarian who's there and there is this whole concept of devdasi which is also by the way there in indonesia mm. where women were married off to gods and they were temple dancers you know uh, but in a very twisted way they were very similar to geishas in japan you know oh. and i love that historical aspect and there's one character who is a, a devdasi we call them that uh, in the second book and there's a heist in the second book so it's, it's oh, wow. so different from the first book that i'm dealing with that it's it's been just a lot of fun writing it sounds awesome uh, sounds awesome i love heist in epic fantasy too and yeah this just sounds really good to me so i will wish you good luck writing that but for now for those of you who haven't picked up sons of darkness if you love grim dark fantasy yeah if you love grim dark fantasy try reading this one it is my favorite fantasy debut of last year and again, congratulations to Gaurav for the second release of Sons of Darkness. I think I will invite Gaurav once again back here when Dance of Shadows comes out. So you will see his face plenty of times on my YouTube channel here. <laughs> Absolutely. <Yeah. laughs> Thank you so much, Patrick, for having me. It's been an honor to chat with you. And it honestly felt like you and I are just having a discussion in a cafe about books. So yeah. I am so grateful for that. And the comfort which you you know lend to your authors so thank you so much and everyone else thank you cheers sons of darkness is out uh, please give it a shot and yeah cheers yeah thank you you're welcome Gaurav bye bye lastly I want to say thank you so much once again to all my patrons who keep on supporting me